Um, I represent Manjia, the disaster prone district of Ruda, and I'm the chief opposition whip. And uh, I'm here on invitation by this committee as a witness. Mr. Chairman, allow me to raise a procedure or commence with the procedure uh, issue because I've uh, gathered the committee as a council, the Honorable Zake as a council, and the rule. Let me take you there. Sub rule 210, sub rule 3. A witness before any other committee may also be represented by a council. Okay. It is explicit that a witness before. Can, can you read your, in, I mean, your letter of invitation? Uh, I wish you the rule pertaining to the dictates of the procedure you should have raised, which I've quoted in the rules, rather than subjecting uh, me. I've, I'm not privy to your, your letter of invitation. Can, can, can you read your letter of invitation? Okay. Address to me, uh, Nambeshe John Baptist, Chief of Opposition Whip and a member of Parliament in Manjia County, uh, meeting with the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Rules, Privileges, Discipline, on the inquiry into allegations of misconduct and uh, misbehavior against Honorable Francis Zake, MP Mitiana Municipality, during the plenary sitting of 29th November 2022. Rita dated the 8th December 2023, where within you were invited for a meeting with the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline as a witness in the above captioned matter. That all I mean scheduled for Wednesday 13th December 2023. The said meeting was adjourned prematurely due to the absence of counsel for Honorable Zake and the failure by the committee to realize what. Please note that the Honorable Zake has been invited for the meeting and has a right to cross-examine you on the matter arising from your interaction with the committee. Well, thank you for misconduct against Honorable Francis Zake. And during the state meeting, during the plenary proceedings, rather, during this meeting, Honorable Lokwago Elias, counsel for Honorable Zake, requested the committee to invite the following persons. And he did not say whether you should come with a, a lawyer. The persons he invited, actually requested to be invited, are the right Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable John Baptist Nabeshe, Honorable Made the Lomega Segona, Honorable Derek Nyeko, Honorable Francis Kabue, and then Honorable Gilbert Olanya. So the provision you have quoted in our rules of procedure, it is not mandatory. Therefore, allow me to proceed with my communication because you have not heard from me. Maybe I, we have read. Dear colleagues, especially the new members, I want to inform this house that the house has uh, considered sending new members to this, uh, assigning new members to this committee. About uh, eight members, new members, have been added to this committee and others have been taken to other committees. The committee commends considering, commends consideration of the matter and has so far interacted, our committee has so far interacted with the following witnesses. Uh, this is in regard to the matter of the alleged misconduct and misbehavior 
by Honorable Francis Zake, MP Mitiana Municipality, which did happen during the plenary sitting of the 29th of November 2023. The people whom we have so far interacted with are the technical officers from the Department of the Official Report who facilitated the plenary sitting of 2029 November 2023. The witnesses also presented evidence and satisfied copy of the answer of the plenary proceedings of 29th November and the video recordings, recording of the proceedings. The, command, the, 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 third, the second person was the commandant plenary, commandant parliamentary police who presented the CCTV footages and images of the chamber for the said date, that is 29th of November, 2023. And on accompanying report, the staff of parliament who facilitated the plenary sitting of the 29th of November, 2022, namely uh, the two clerks at table, Sergeant at arms, and the two door keepers. The witnesses were cross-examined by the lawyers of Honorable Zake, that is the real Lokwago and co-advocates in the meetings of the committee held on Wednesday the 8th of Thursday and on Thursday 9th and Monday the 20th of November 2023 respectively. So in the meeting of the 20th of November, Honorable Francis Zake requested the committee to invite the following persons to appear before the committee as witnesses. One, the Honorable Deputy Speaker of Parliament. The reason given was he should appear to participate, to participate, I mean, to, to particularize the impunished conduct of the Honorable Zake that formed the basis for his referral to the committee for Honorable Zake and to understand the nature of the accusation made against him, if any. Number two, Honorable John Baptist Nabeshe mentioned in the answer of the 29th November 2022. The CCTV analysis report of the parliamentary police and the testimony of witnesses, John Baptist Owen, the doorkeeper. Honorable Medad Segona Lubega was also mentioned in the answer and then the CCTV camera, the CCTV ana analyst report of the parliamentary police and in the testimony of witnesses, that is Casiria Ignatius, the clerk at table, and John Bosco Win, the doorkeeper. The fourth person is Honorable Derek Nyego, mentioned in the testimony of witnesses, of witness, John Bosco Win, the doorkeeper. The fifth witness is Honorable Frank Kabuye, mentioned in the testimony of witness John Bosco Win, the doorkeeper. The sixth is Honorable Gil Bartolanya, mentioned in the testimony of witness John Bosco Wayne, the doorkeeper. The committee deferred its decision on the matter to the next meeting, yet scheduled for Tuesday, the 28th, November 2023. However, the meeting did not take place, and the ruling is to be delivered in today's meeting, the 6th of February 2024. You recall that on the 20th of November 2023, the committee convened a meeting to consider the allegations of misconduct against Honorable Francis Zake during the plenary proceedings of the 29th of November 2022. And during this meeting, I read earlier on, indicated that Honorable Lokwago Elias, counsel for Honorable Zake, requested the committee to invite the following persons to appear before the committee as witnesses. I already mentioned their names. The committee promised to consider the request and make finding on the relevance of each and every witness requested by Honorable Zake. This is therefore the finding of the committee on the report, rather on the request. While the committee has powers under Article 90, Paragraph 3A of the Constitution and Rule 2008A of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament to, to call or summon any person to give evidence Rule 211.3 provides that a committee may at its discretion refuse to hear any irrelevant evidence or listen to any recalcitrant witness, uh, recalcitrant witness, or rather five. It follows, therefore, that the committee is clothed with the discretion to determine 
which witnesses to appear or, the, or on the basis of their relevancy in aiding the committee with its inquiry. Number one, you recall uh, the Honorable, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker was uh, requested to appear. Under Rule 7, Paragraph 2 of the Rules of Procedure, the Speaker has the mandate to preserve order and decorum in the House and decide questions of order and practice. Further, under Rule 87.1, the Speaker is requested for the observance of the order in the House. This is the same mandate the Right Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, exercised when he presided over the plenary of the 29th of November 2022. The decision taken by the Speaker is a decision of the House unless challenged or challenged within the confines of Rule 87, uh, Paragraph 2. Therefore, the decision by the Right Honorable Speaker to refer Honorable Francis Zake to the committee passion to Rule 175 is a decision of the whole House. And as such, to invite the Right Honorable Speaker as a witness of the committee on the basis of the decision, on the decision taken as a presiding officer would amount to inviting the whole House as witnesses. And inviting the whole House, I don't know whether this room can be enough to accommodate that. We need the cases here to, to give us another plan so that we build another, another, another uh, committee room. Therefore, having referred the matter to the Committee on Rules as a presiding officer, it is erroneous to invite him as a witness in the same matter. As if the committee wishes to question or challenge the authority under which he mandate the referral to the committee. In addition, the video evidence laid before the committee clearly shows the circumstances under which the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker referred this matter to the committee. There is no cause to invite him to appear before the committee to explain the same. It is on this basis that the committee declines to invite the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker as witness, as a witness. The second witness, Honorable John Baptist Nabeshe and Honorable Madrid uh, Lobega Segona. The witnesses who have so far appeared before this committee have given evidence that both Honorable John Baptist Nabeshe and Honorable Madrid Lobega Segona made submissions on the impeached uh, conduct of Honorable Francis Zake during the plenary of the 29th of November. The committee is corroborated by the video evidence adduced before the committee, which shows both Honorable members making submissions on the conduct of Honorable Zake on the material on the material day. They are therefore relevant in aiding the committee understand the basis upon which they made their submissions during the plenary and their observations regarding the conduct of Honorable Zake at the material time. For that reason, the request for that reason, the request to invite them as witnesses is granted. Honorable Derek Nyeko, Honorable Frank Kabue, and Honorable Gil Batulanya, it was the evidence of the wing of Mr. Wing, John Bosco, <coughs> the doorkeeper, and the sergeant at Ham's office, that the three honorable members, to which Honorable Nyeko, Derek, Honorable Frank Kabue, and Honorable Gil Batulanya, were engaged in misconduct together with Honorable Zake on the 29th of November, 2023. However, the mandate of this committee under Rule 175 is exercised by order of the House. This committee can only consider matters referred to it by the Speaker or the order on the order of the House. In the circumstances, the committee has no mandate to inquire into alleged, mis mis alleged conduct of the mentioned members of Parliament in the absence of an order from the House to do so in total conformity with the Rule 175-1 of the rules of procedure. The committee, therefore, declines the invitation by Honorable Francis Zake to have Honorable Gil Bartolana, Honorable Frank Kabue, Honorable Derek Nyeko to appear before it. The committee shall therefore proceed to have an interface with Honorable John Baptist Nabeshe and Honorable Segona as witnesses of the committee uh, delivered at Kampala by the Committee Rules, Privileges, and Discipline, today the 6th of February 2024. I, Reverend Father Charles Sonnen, MP, Vice Chairperson's Committee on Rules. Honorable Nabeshe, 
for for a, a matter of refreshing our memories, you have raised an issue also to whether passion to rule 2010-3, you require a, a council. Rule 2010-3, no, 210, sorry, not 2000, thank you for the correction. That was an escape of the lips. Uh, 210 is discretionary, and in any case, the committee decided uh, to summon you as a person who was in the in the what in the house, and assist the committee of what you saw and observed on the 29th. There is no lawyer required to inform the committee what you saw or observed. I don't think you need a lawyer to inform the committee. Therefore, uh, I would like to request uh, the technical uh, team to play the CCTV recording of the events in the parliament. And we wish uh, you, the Honorable uh, Nambeshe, uh, to, to also take that moment to refresh your mind and also for the benefit of the new members. Uh, who have just joined this committee, that they can also get acquainted with the same. Thank you. We, uh, as the oral institution of KCCA, we are going to sit to deal with all issues to do with our budget, which is now being handled by the Committee of Parliament, and uh, our team is already appearing before the Committee on Infrastructure over the same, and we have to have with our roads, the infrastructure in Kampala, the ADB loan, and all these other issues. So we had set aside the whole of tomorrow to deal with the same as the topmost leadership of the city uh, to prepare accordingly. So I was going to request commit the committee that we push all these matters to Thursday. We shall make a ruling on that, and then we supply you the information. I wanted to inform my member. Okay. I think about, yes, the amicable resolution of the impact that we have reached. And I have not made any commitment on behalf of government. I'm only being misunderstood. My colleague is merely hitting the messenger way to bring the message. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that mine was to report what we are arranged. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can, can you play backward? <coughs> because uh, he, he, he needs to confirm whether he is the one. Or, or, because he may say you, you just uh, copy and paste something. Can you play backward? <coughs> can, can, can you play fr from the time Honorable Zakir Ross on the floor? From the very moment, Honorable Zakir requested uh, to.
also doubled as my president, Bodegas. He was abducted with three other youth from their workplace. Mr. Speaker, only this month alone, hundreds of youth have been abducted and they have disappeared. They have not been seen or heard of since then, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me pass. No, Mr. Speaker. I'm the one who has a round drive with a round you. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. No, I want to buy to you. I'm, I'm, I'm your presiding officer. You want to do Yes, and that of the house to bear with us on this 
the side of the political eye or whatever this happens. Mr. Speaker, I would like to inform the members that why the member had to go out of his way and lose his food. It's because of the massive abduction. And many of those abducted up to now are unaccounted for. And also in our meeting where we retweeted, I want to thank you, right on the speaker. We have asked the government to account for this new weight of abduction. And the leader of government business willing really to get all the relevant leaders to account for the whereabouts of those that have been abducted. Okay. And uh, besides Order. that, and uh, besides that, besides that, Order. Order. Thank you very much, uh, the right honorable speaker. The leader of opposition is bringing a very good message. But I doubt whether it's in order for him to be the one making those commitments. When the people in the government are here, when the speakers come back and want to take us to matters of national importance, can I request that the people in the government make the commitments instead of the law, so that when we come back here, we are sure that we are coming back to do business about this matter which has been around us every time and every day. That's why I am, I'm, Honorable Nadesh is my friend, is my lord, but I'm, I'm forced to put him on order. Just because he's not supposed to be making those commitments. And let the people in government make the commitments. Right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, please, Honorable Nadesh. Number one, the no one will be allowed to that me this time. Because I see now where we are going, we have started a, a very dangerous thing. A very, very dangerous thing. I cannot, my decision, what we discussed, is not possible when someone says to me. No. Not any single day. We will remain around and press him to try to even commit yourself. If you are doing it for your constituents and you want to appease your constituents to show your own hard work, do it. But it will never be promotion of the government. The commitment, that issue I started with will now honor what is our job here. Honor what is our job not been in this house for over 20 years. He has not been here and without my permission. If I go in the hamper, if I go in the river. But I have never spoken about it. What is the problem? You, you need a police. Maybe he's in a hospital. But I want to caution you. And you see that's why I have moved to matter of national importance. Because I didn't want you to push me in the corner. Okay? Colleagues, if this house has you, if you want to do wrong, go and do it in your country. You can't do it on this floor. Number two. Number two, if you want pictures to go around, people holding you up, how you are arrested, corroded, breaking the tone, and you use them during campaigns. We can organize for you, we are here national city. Then you do that. Number three, number three, as per rule 175 of the rules of procedure, as per rule of the in the committee on rules for the state. <coughs> Matters of national importance. No, when I will rock, I can rock. I'm done with that. No, I wanted to inform my members. Okay. So I think about, yes, the amicable resolution of the impasse that we had reached. And I had not made any commitments on behalf of government. I'm only being misunderstood. My colleague is merely hitting a messenger with bringing the message. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that mine was to report what we have arrived at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Member, Mr. Dr. Nampo, in Georgia. Well, 
thank you, Honorable Nab, about your opinion regarding the conduct of the Honorable Zake. Uh, the, the conduct of uh, Honorable Zake was as a result of uh, equally unusual conduct of the presiding officer. Because after the, the Honorable Zake had caught the eye of the presiding officer, and he was allowed to submit on a matter not of national importance, get me right, and there is a dichotomy, a very thin one between the two, on a matter not of national importance, but a matter of urgent public importance. It is even well enshrined in our rules of procedure. A matter of urgent public importance does not require even to give uh, notice or to have it correlated with whatsoever the proceedings of the House because there were ongoing abductions, massive. And uh, so, therefore, it looked unusual to discontinue the member uh, from uh, uh, submitting or raising the matter. And uh, that's why you saw me comply with the speaker's direction when he said, Rob, talk to your member. I was pleading to him to relax and cool down so that uh, sanity would prevail and uh, the presiding officer would allow him to conclude on the matter. Uh, for clarity, you stated that you, you rose because of the unusual conduct or the conduct of uh, the Honorable Zake was also in resonance with the unusual conduct of the presiding officer. For clarity, can you, uh, can you make me also understand the unusual conduct of the presiding officer? Mr. Chairman, you have not dispensed justice to my humble request that I placed in your office, respectfully. It was my considered view that the Honorable Presiding Officer then would have been the right person uh, to raise uh, that question, especially if I doubted his usual conduct. But now that you have uh, uh, done a complete opposite of what I requested, respectfully let me say this, that uh, it is the Speaker who allows a member to submit, and indeed the member had caught his eye. And he was in the middle of the point, and this was uh, unequivocally clear that he, it was bordering on the cross human rights violations that were ongoing. <laughs> and I therefore found it very unusual, not merely unusual alone, but uh, actually unusual for him because I know him as a, a, fair, a very fair presiding officer. But that particular day, that he would discontinue a member mid sentence, mid, in mid submission. To me, it didn't augur well, it didn't look usual, and uh, it wasn't prudent. So, equally, the, the presiding officer was disorderly in ordering the Honorable Zake. Those are your descriptive words of the presiding officer. Uh, they don't, they you, are not mine. It, how would you put it now? Uh, in any case, the, the presiding officer enjoys lots of latitude because, in his opinion, that's what the rules say. And in his opinion, if he found that a, a member was crossly disorderly, he would be at liberty to discontinue him. But uh, where do you read this orderliness in his submission? When he was submitting, he was clear, precise, concise, and to the point. It was only cut short, and then this being unusually cut short is when he lost his cool somehow, okay. and remained standing. Standing is what I object to. When the presiding officer is speaking, you are supposed to resume, and that is order, is in our rules, yes. order of the house, order of speech. That's where I saw things going astray. And he allowed the corrections. He allowed me to speak to him, and he resumed his seat. 
Thank you. He requested to the speaker when he requested you as acting law then to control him in your opinion. Is this a conduct and becoming of a member of parliament? Uh, when one says no, no, it doesn't constitute misconduct at all. But when one remains standing, when the presiding officer is taking, has taken over the floor, that's where I saw it uh, unusual. That's when I, I rose. But uh, me and no, no, I uh, had virtually nothing to do with cross misconduct. Okay. Finally, before I allow other members to seek for clear to Honorable Council also to, to ask you some few questions in case you ask. Honorable Nabeshe, you are on record to have tendered an apology to the Speaker and the entire House over the conduct of the Honorable Francis Zake. Was it an expression of regret for the manner in which the Honorable Zake Francis conducted himself? What you consider as an apology, but in that submission, I put up a spirited defense for the substance and the point that had been raised by the Honorable Zauke, by the way. But in commencement, indeed, I had to plead with the House to bear with us on our side of the political divide mm -hmm. for whatever, and mark and underline that, for whatever mishaps, whatever mishaps would mean whatever mi unfortunate happenings, for whatever, I didn't lay a finger. For whatever, because it had, it had degenerated into an impasse, by the way. Me, the only unusual was when he remained standing. But that he was still advancing his point by saying no, no, to me that was not a misconduct. Okay. Uh, so in any case, it was courteous on the part of uh, the leader of the opposition, who was then in ambition, John Baptist to ask the House, out of courtesy, to bear with us. But uh, I don't think it constitutes apology. Uh, thank you. So, we have yourself and the team on the opposition. Uh, the point Honorable Zake was raising was a point of abductions. However, uh, there are unmentioned procedures which could be in the House whereby we lobby one another. You can lobby government, the government side can also lobby you people on a particular matter of their interest. Uh, when the presiding officer stopped the matter halfway, in my own observation or thinking, it showed that there were prior dialogue going on between the two sides of the house. I would like to inquire from you, are you privy, were you aware of any uh, prior dealings on this matter which was on the table or on the floor of parliament at that time which my, my brother, uh, the Honorable Zake, tried to raise on the floor of parliament before we judge the, the presiding officer then? Government business was leading the team from the ruling party. And indeed, uh, it was a fruitful uh, interface which arrived at uh, an amicable resolution. And in that meeting, it was unanimously adopted that uh, I, Nambeshe John Baptist, leading the opposition then, uh, report to the House what has transpired, what we have arrived at. That's why it was uncalled for on the part of my very member, my own member, to have misunderstood me to be making commitments on behalf of government. When I was merely a messenger reporting what had transpired and what we had agreed upon, which was equally agreeable to the honorable, the aggrieved, the honorable Zake. So I saw the punishment uh, rather high-handed after we had uh, reached an amicable resolution on the matter. Thank you. Chair, 
I wanted some clarification from Honorable Nambeshe, who is a senior. You rightly say that you are... The microphone is not on, be on record. You rightly say that Honorable Zakir lost his school when the speaker stopped him. And you are called to come and uh, uh, make your member understand whatever the situation was. Don't you think that was courteous of the speaker to have invited you as the leader of opposition to come and call your, your members? Because at the worst scenario, it would have been, the speaker would have thrown Honorable Zake completely out of the house. Thank you. Responses have made. But by the way, I've actually not, there is no question. I, I, I didn't want it to be a tennis, a table tennis kind of conversation. No, the, the Honorable Mavengina has raised a supportive argument okay, please on proceed. my response. Because in any case, the speaker uh, retreated, in fact, he invited us to that, to his chambers. That's how we resolve the matter. We never even expected the, Zake, the Honorable Zake to be, referred. Uh, to be referred to this committee. Mm. We thought the matter had been arrested. And I represent the people of Unyole East, that's in Utareja district. I, I just uh, want a clarification from Honorable uh, Nambeshe. When I came in, you were trying to explain that Honorable uh, Zake was saying, no, 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 no. And according to you, that no meant nothing. Uh, at the time when he was saying, no, 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 was he seated or was he standing? And where he was in breach, I've been vividly clear on that. He's not in the no, 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 no. He's in the standing, remaining standing, instead of resuming his seat. Mm. Uh, I take this opportunity anyway, for record purposes. <coughs> the, new, the members who have just joined. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nuru Biamuka. Member of Parliament, Chitagwenda County, and a new member of this committee. Mr. Chairman. You're making a submission. Just introduce your name, yourself. I will give you time to talk. Another. Thank you, Chair. My name is Muhindo Harul Tony. Represent the people book. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you sign, you know, in my book. Chair and colleagues, good morning. I'm called Atkins Katsabe. I'm his twin brother. I represent Konzo County West. Uh, Chair, my name is Shemez uh, Elijah Dickens. I'm a professor of political science. I represent the people of Shema County South, a member of this committee. Another new member from my right. Okay, let's let's proceed. Mutembuli, you are on the mic. Good morning, Chair and Members. I'm called Dorothy Nyakato. I'm the Woman Member of Parliament, Chitagwenda District. And uh, I've been on this committee for the last... Do you have any, any submission to make, any clarification to get from the Honorable Nabesha? Because the not. visa of the committee yes, is yeah. invited yes, by yeah. you. No. Mm, not really. On, upon your request? Mm, no. Okay, proceed, proceed. For the record, Chair, right from the inception, right from inception of these proceedings, we were told that Zake is not an HSD person. Mm -hmm. And all witnesses are witnesses of the committee. Yes. And it was in that spirit that we invited the committee to exercise its discretion to consider these witnesses as necessary witnesses, as relevant witnesses. And in the wisdom of the committee, you resolved from amongst the names we submitted 
to invite to. So I just wanted that record to be set straight, Chair. Having said that, Chair, just have a couple of questions to the witness of the committee. One, Honorable Nambeshe, if I may be permitted. Oh, yes, proceed. You've said that you didn't expect, actually, the speaker to refer the Honorable Zake to this committee. Are you surprised that he's, he was summoned? I mean, he was uh, referred to the committee? The uh, in fact, uh, I, I was not only surprised, but shocked at once. Yes. Because I remember approaching the speaker to reverse the ruling, but it was already too late. The, at worst, it would have been suspending him for the remainder of the day, if he did whatever he had uh, done. Uh, would amount to or attract some form of punishment. Okay. Now, again, on record here, at least what is captured in the answer here, at a point where you are requested to talk to the Honorable Zake and the uh, there was that mishap you talked about. The speaker suspended, the presiding officer, rather, the deputy speaker, suspended the proceedings for five minutes. Did you participate in any meeting during that interval? If so, in, because you are there as the lead of opposition in that time. If so, what did you discuss with the speaker in regards to this impasse, this stalemate, what did you discuss and how was it resolved? Uh, in fact, I was leading the team uh, from opposition. Of course, in the absence of the Honorable Zake. And uh, whatever we actually, and I actively participated in the proceedings of that uh, meeting. And we all justified the anger and um, the zest and the valve by which the owner of Zake raised the issue. The substance in it is that there had been abductions, there were still an ongoing mysterious disappearances of people, and unaccounted for, like I reported. So that's why reporting back to the House the agreement was that it, it should be the leader of the opposition to report. And it is what I, and in fact, whatever I reported was not in dispute. Otherwise, the speaker would have objected to it. So it was by consensus, whatever you reported was by consensus, including the speaker himself agreeing to that? Yes. And uh, here, I take you now to the Hansard, because in what you reported, uh, Chair and Honorable Members, what I have on the Hansard, page 6,444, you appear to regret the mishaps that had happened, where you are saying, thank you, Mr. Speaker, I would like to seek your indulgence and that of the House to bear with us on this side of the political aisle for whatever mishaps. Just wanted to request you to substantiate what you meant, the mishaps that had happened, which you appear to be, I mean, to regret on, this, on the floor. The regrettable happening, which was unfortunate, was for a member to remain standing when he had been discontinued in his speech, even if it is unfairly done by the speaker. But uh, by virtue of uh, his office and the latitude that he enjoys, cut us off the rules. When he speaks and requests you to even resume your seat and remain standing, that in, uh, in and of itself would uh, border defiance. And that was the unfortunate happening. 
Had you discussed it in the retreat that you had with the speaker? Of course, the speaker was act by the this defiance on the part of uh, the Honorable Zake, even after he pleaded with him that you are my voter. You, you saw him pleading. Uh, you, we need each other. So he was charged and angry. So to, to, to cool him down, of course, one had to commence with the, uh, this uh, admission to mishaps, to an unfortunate happening when the member did not uh, uh, comply with the speaker's request to resume his seat. So my question was, did, you, did, you, did that future in your discussion in the retreat you had within those five minutes when the proceedings had been suspended, did, did it future there that you discussed that mishap and the speaker agreed to the fact that you are going to render an apology, uh, uh, you are going to register that regret when house resumes? Of course, uh, right from inception, it is uh, what form the, the discussions. Uh, because in the opinion of the speaker, the member had been gravely disorderly. So ours was to justify the statement he raised. That, he, that statement would not be prima facie defamatory to any person. And uh, eventually, we resolved that impasse because of that. Yes. Did you share that with the Honorable Zake, the, the proceedings that transpired in that meeting? There was no need sharing with him, uh, especially when we had assigned, you know, we, I gave assignment to the Honorable Segona. The Honorable Segona, unfortunately, is not here to engage the Honorable Zake as I report to the House because I had an assignment by uh, that uh, meeting to report whatever had transpired in the house. And indeed, the, the Honorable Segona discharged uh, that duty successfully when he engaged the Honorable Zake. Okay. Uh, the very last question on that particular matter. When indeed you took that bold step to say yes, you are regretting the mishap that had happened and the speaker agreed to the same. Was it the understanding in that meeting that once you put it on record, it would put the matter to rest? That's what I expected. <clears throat> but I think when the speaker read the uncoordinated movement of our own troops, a member putting his leader to order, <laughs> even when the member, the, the guy was, by the way, putting up a spirited defense in support of the Honorable Zake. So I think the speaker... I think again lost his school and arrived at that uh, verdict. After that, what, uh, after you put that on record, did the Honorable Zake stand up again to protest against what you put on record? No. Did he in any way uh, attack the speaker or in any way express any dissatisfaction with the conduct? I mean, with what you had put on record? No. And did he in any way indulge in any act that would offend the speaker? No. So even when the Honorable Shaba raised that point of order, was he doing it for and on behalf of the Honorable Zake? No. No, it was populist of sorts because there was no justification him derailing the house from what I was raising as a commitment by government. And at his level, I expected him to have understood me. And incidentally, he had participated in the meeting where we were, and he knew I was the one to report. Okay. Now, you also said you are not, you took issue, you took exception of the conduct of the speaker in stopping the member midway his submission on a matter of that importance grave as it was. What was the response of the speaker to your 
concerns when you were in the meeting. I, I wish they replay the, the speaker's communication soon after that point of order. He was very angry. He said nobody, and in fact, he was referring to me because in any case he had forgotten that I was reporting. So he thought I was challenging his authority to shift the house to matters of national importance. He had forgotten that I was supposed to report, by the way. But you see how angry he was? Yes. He never meant well, in fact, he never meant well. I, I only insisted that let me conclude the point. You saw me struggling to get back to the mic. That point of order, whether it had been, uh, I don't want to say this, but let me say with difficulty, stage managed, act, the person of the speaker. Oh, it was stage managed and by? I, I, I can't tell, because it was uncalled for. You better dissect that one. And if you were uh, me, the person who raised point of order should have been a witness. It was uncalled for, it was uncourteous, and full of malice. And therefore, I hold it in suspicion that it could have been stage managed. By who? I don't know. Please, uh, for, for, for clarity, it was stage managed. I don't understand that political uh, statement. Can, can you clarify for the new members, especially those who are, have just joined parliament, the 11th parliament? I'm not. It didn't come in good faith, especially when what I was raising was merely a message from where he had also participated. And uh, being my, a member on my side of the political divide, I don't think he would be in sharp disagreement with the report I was giving and misinterpreted okay. as a commitment by government. Uh, how many were you in that, that, that chamber, in that the, whatever, the office of the speaker? Oh, to ascertain the number. Yes. Uh, the best person maybe could be the technical officers to go back to the CCTV cameras to establish that number because we were our team of opposition and that of government. Government, by the way, constituted over 10 ministers. All the 10 ministers were in that... Uh, yes, that's sorrow. a big room, by the way. That's, that's Did the all of them of the uh, speak at that time? Of course, these are not other meetings. Okay. Chaired by the speaker. In five minutes. Uh, but, uh, Within our, the five minutes. Our side, was it five minutes? It, it stretched slightly. Okay. Uh, to stretch, to stretch uh, slightly. Thank you. Other, if there is any other... No, are I you done? Concluded. Okay, please. Yes. Because actually, please, I was allow. that particular question, besides the number, at least some of the... Okay, he has alluded to the fact that some ministers were there, about 10 ministers. But on the side of the opposition, who, else, who was there? Uh, myself, the Honorable Medat Segona, the Honorable Oshabe Patrick Insamba, um, uh, oh, where is, where is. Uh, this thing happened a long time ago. By the way, I'm trying to refresh my memory of how many other members participated. Since it's not on record of the answer, mm. you just have to bear with me that uh, my memory may not serve me well on oh. establishing how many others participated. Council, uh, uh, how, how was he invited in that? And other ministers, you and other members and ministers, how were you invited? Was it by impulse or? No, by the speaker. Okay. Uh, the speaker himself. Uh, uh, check it up. Could be as usual, by the way, whenever he's uh, retreating to that chamber or even uh, the superior, they sometimes mention it. I don't quite remember whether it was. Uh, mentioned in the house, but we uh, were officially invited to this uh, meeting. So uh, I wanted to know, for record purposes, did the speaker in any way sound apologetic?
to the conduct you expressed to be unusual, his own conduct, stopping a member midway his submission on a matter of grave national concern like that one? Oh, this happened after what I'm discussing as unusual happened after the meeting. I don't know whether you are coordinating. No, 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 no. Yes. Where the Honorable Bozake, it is here on record. The deputy speaker said, the Honorable Bozake, kindly take your seat. Honorable leader of the opposition, can you control your member? Then the Honorable Bozake said, Mr. Speaker, no, 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 no. Interjections. Then the deputy speaker says, colleagues, the house is suspended for five minutes. And this happened at it after the Honorable Bozake had raised that matter of great national importance. But of course, not after the meeting. That is, that is uh, the genesis of... Uh, no, it is this impasse which prompted that meeting. Uh, yes. So, and I'm asking, because at that time you were already incensed by the conduct of the speaker stopping the Honorable Bozake from raising that particular matter. And in that meeting, if I may ask, when you went into the meeting of the speaker and all those dignitaries, did you raise that issue of the speaker stopping the member midway his submission? Oh, yes. We justified the, the point that he had raised of the massive abductions that were still ongoing. Exactly. And it is, uh, uh, I will locate basis on that for further discussion is because they saw sense that indeed it is still happening and uh, it has been a, my uh, question then remains uh, was the speaker apologetic about his conduct about him stopping did he sound apologetic about stopping the member from raising that particular matter the matter of abductions did he sound apologetic in that meeting you i had? think he did not need to sound apologetic First and foremost, action speak louder. Just by the mere fact that the presiding officer, even with all the discretionary powers to continue with the, the proceedings of the house, he had suspended the house. That, that in itself was courteous enough to have this matter resolved outside the court. I mean, outside the proceedings of the house. So now that he had uh, convened and himself was chairing and allowing whatever this content that we had to be raised. So that accommodation, in my own view, whether we would interpret it as apology or whatever, but it was a maturity. Okay, finally, Chair, what is your position, your view on the matter which you consider to have been resolved first and foremost in that meeting involving senior government officials, ministers, 10 ministers, and a high-powered delegation from the opposition, where you are interested to make a report on the floor of the House for and on behalf of that meeting, which was presided over or chaired by the Speaker, and the matter is concluded. What is your view about that matter being reopened up before this committee? You have to respond. They're asking you. They're asking me. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm asking you. No, 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 you. You better repeat the question. As oblivious. No, I was saying, I was saying, you went into a retreat to resolve that impasse. And the government sent a high powered delegation which involved over 10 ministers. And you yourself, you had a very, very big team from the opposition led by you, the leader of opposition. And the meeting was presided over by the speaker. And you agree in the meeting that this is the way to go. And you are interested with the mandate with the, uh, to come and make a report for and on behalf of that meeting, which sat in the speaker's office there. And you agreed and said, let's resolve this matter this way. You come, you make a report on the floor of the house. All of a sudden, it's a, the matter surfaces and is reopened up for investigation before this committee. What do you have to say about that? What I have to say about it, I've said it, that it was uh, unexpected. Uh, and uh, why I said I was not merely surprised, but I was shocked. Because we had uh, amicably resolved this matter. 
and I never expected this matter to have uh, uh, amounted to a prima facie defamatory uh, matter to the person of the speaker that it would warrant uh, being referred to the committee. That's why I say it was unusual because I know him. This time round, I don't know what exactly, but what could have maybe prompted this? I, I, I am very suspicious of that point of order. But uh, that notwithstanding, I think uh, uh, the, the worst, at the worst, it would have been the member being suspended for the remainder of the day. If he, indeed his stand, remaining standing was so uh, annoying. So, so, according, grave, so grave. according to you, the speaker was driven by anger. He yeah. was annoyed. Yes. Thank you. Honorable uh, Nabe, uh, we should have not been discussing because in the, in the letter of invitation, we invited you to interact with us and give us information or evidence to help us arrive at the logical conclusion or report to the, to, to, to the House on the matter during the plenary sitting, not uh, what took place during your, your meeting. Now, help this committee. Were you discussing the misconduct of the Honorable Zake, or you were discussing the issue he raised on the floor of Parliament? Of the two, which one form your basis of conclusion? I think the the committee that meeting we had was just an informal meeting. The formal committee that is discussing the purported misconduct is your committee, Mr. Chairman. And so in that meeting, we were resolving a standoff, which I've repeatedly mentioned as an impasse for the uh, normal flow of the proceedings of the House. We were only surprised that the speaker again took it up with the, took issue with again is okay, out of the blues, because we had resolved that I go and report the, what had transpired. To report that the issue he raised yes. uh, was to, to be investigated or? Mm, uh, comprehensive. Because what made the presiding officer to suspend the house was not uh, based on the issue raised by Honorable Zake, the abduction of the, 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 the members of of this country, uh, but was on the alleged misconduct. Not so. Uh -huh. So when you were coming to report, were you coming to report that the government would take commitment into the issue raised? Or, oh, let misconduct? me refresh your memory of what has just... And I must thank you and salute you at once for playing this uh, clip. Mm -hmm. Because in the clip you will hear me say, we have tasked government okay. to come with a comprehensive report and give accountability of the whereabouts of the missing persons, okay. tasking government. So it was, government had already also, of course, uh, uh, taken an ad undertaking to report back in the shortest time possible. Okay. So the matter had been arrested. Oh, thank you. Any other? Uh, yes, Honorable. Uh, Can I be refreshed with the, with the, the, the witnesses? Yes, thank you so much. Um, my first question, my questions go to Honorable Nambeshe. My first question, Honorable Nambeshe, uh, from the recording, and as the council look or go right through, you can see the speaker did not mention who should go for the meeting. For you particularly, how were you invited for that meeting? Because ordinarily the speaker reads names, names, but no names were read. Uh, the, if it is not mentioned on the answer, then uh, the members that uh, uh, form the membership of that uh, informal committee were at uh, the discretion of the, the speaker. Because some who came in, I had not, uh, I didn't participate in selecting who attends that meeting. But at least I had a formidable team on my side of opposition and then uh, on the government. And uh, I think for me, uh, the most uh, significant issue here is about the importance of that meeting, not about how it is arrived at. Okay, th th that said, you said you had a formidable team. You were the leader of opposition at that time. Did you constitute your team or someone else identified members to come on your side? 
Uh, some of the members, I think, were uh, invited by the Honorable Segona because uh, we worked very closely with him on that particular day. And um, these are members uh, who are a formidable team on our side. So there are some members from the opposition that attended the meeting, but whom you don't know how they got to the meeting? Uh, yes, like the Honorable Shebe. Okay. Uh, was Honorable Zake part of the meeting? I think uh, you arrived when I had answered that question. He was not. Uh, did, did, do you find it necessary as the leader of the opposition, to, because you are discussing his issue, did you find it necessary to impress it to the chair to invite him to be part of the solution? There was no need. In fact, before you came, and you know the disadvantage again of members arriving late, this question had come up. I had raised the objection, actually a procedural matter here that I ought to have been represented because it is enshrined in our rules, Rule 210. And if I had my counsel here, I wouldn't be the one talking. He would be acting on my behalf. So equally, when this is a formidable team of opposition, was acting I, I, on behalf I, I, I of the over Honorable that. Zake. You have ruled, all right? I rule over that because uh, unfair, what so? you observed, uh. your counsel did not observe. <coughs> what you listened to, your counsel was not there. You are here to inform. You have been invited to inform, requested to come and inform, give information to the committee. What you observed... Yes. Uh, chair, chair. May has give you yes. No, it has been unfair, Mr. Chairman. I still, I still. And that's why the Lord may is just listen, listening, you know, attentively, and he may again ask you questions. Proceed, Honourable. Uh, nothing. Uh, chair, chair, my coming in later, notwithstanding, I just want to know from the leader of opposition whether he thinks that the concerned party being part of the solution could have been something that could have thought about. That's simple. So whether he, I'm trying to know whether he impressed it upon the speaker then that they should invite Honorable Zake to be part of the meeting, or he did not. Simple, that's what I wanted to know. No, the Honorable Member shouldn't take offense of what I've just said. I said it in good, good faith, that if we are again to be repetitive, and even our rules uh, dictate against the repetition, if you have arrived, the first uh, ascertain whether the questions you are raising have been raised, so that you don't take me behind. My, my final question, sir. Um, in your meeting, your five minutes meeting with the speaker, did you exactly discuss the details of your report? The, the report I was bringing had contents of the details of what transpired in the meeting. So I don't know what you are talking about. So I was bringing a report of the details of uh, what we resolved in, uh, uh, resolved upon in the meeting. And it was not in dispute. Because if it were, the speaker would have objected that what you are reporting is contrary to what we asked you to report. So what you reported was not your opinion, was was a collective opinion of all people that attended that meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe for, for clarity sort of, of the House, that whenever a plenary is suspended, then by instinct or impulse, you run to the Speaker's office to, the, to discuss with him what transpired. Is it the, the system? Uh, you have raised a very pertinent question because I was, in fact, wondering. You know, even uh, the arch arch architectural and the, and the structural design of that chamber, has a door behind the speaker. It, it is, I think, a commonwealth practice. It is not enshrined in our rules. That whenever there is a matter of controversy, and I've seen it, even uh, it happened uh, in the past, in the 10th parliament, and still happens, you withdraw members who are particularly raising the matter and go behind there to harmonize positions. Uh, but incidentally, behind there, there are no chairs. So I think the speaker, in his innovation, instead of us withdrawing, retreating 
to go behind there, he was uh, indeed courteous to invite us to his chambers. Now, I, I should but it is a, a practice uh, that is intended at uh, building consensus on issues of uh, contention, or issues that are in contestation. It's a good one. It's a good practice. Now, assuming tomorrow the speaker up and his hands, and eventually you up and rush there with your team, don't you think you will be in convincing him? Reverend Father, at once, that question is irrelevant. <laughs> it is quite relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So any person cannot do that. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, in addition to the question I earlier ans asked, I am not yet satisfied. I want to make it now very brief. The issue the Honorable Zaki raised on the floor of Parliament, is it the first time that issue was coming formally or informally in the precepts of parliament. In fact, in my question I earlier asked you, I was asking that we have other unwritten ways of handling issues, matters of government as leaders, whereby you can approach our leaders as leaders from the, the opposite side of the house and you, you discuss and at times even reach an amicable uh, a conclusion to, to matters, what I want to ask, was this matter, was it the first time we are raising this matter on the floor of parliament? And two, had you made an effort as the opposition leadership to, to task government informally on this matter? Thank you. But uh, if you followed the clip, we were talking of a new wave of abductions. The drones were all over the place. And this particular member is, uh, incidentally, uh, has so many victims. And one of those that had disappeared mysteriously, I think two, I think hail from uh, his constituents. And definitely, he had a very justification, even when this matter has uh, featured severally to raise that issue. So he, he, he was, uh, he had substance and... Uh, he was justified to raise it. Uh, just uh, one simple clarification I wanted to seek from Honorable Nambeshe. To me, from what transpired between you and counsel for Honorable Zake, our Lord, the Speaker called upon you to come and control your, your people. To me, it was going to be a very simple issue. After having prevailed over Honorable Zake, were you able to convince him to come and apologize before Parliament? Because if you did that, I don't see why Honorable Zake would be here. The matter would have ended, apart from the other one which you are raising. Thank you. The powers of the Speaker. If, in the opinion of the Speaker, the presiding officer, he realized that the conduct of the member uh, bordered the grave cross disorder, he would have asked him to apologize or even withdraw whatever words, but he didn't. So it was not my, in my uh, duty uh, to ask him to apologize if when uh, what I would want him to apologize over is not there. But if the speaker knew he had uh, committed an offense, he would have vividly put it to him to apologize, which he never did. Uh. In a broader sense, and I don't want to be uh, kind of specific to this, to this particular arrangement, uh, Mr. a little of our position. How much contour, influence, and authority do you have over your family members. Number two, in the event that you have a possible conflict 
do you have an arrangement where you generate some concessions and trade-offs? Because all of us are people's representatives, our, our agenda. A moment, sorry for the interjection. Did you say how much control I have over my family members? I'm talking about our position, not, not no, home, honestly, just on, right on my family members? Mm. The opposition is a family. I'm part of it. Uh, then you better be specific. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, little opposition. We're here as a family. In our, uh, in our political science, I would look at our two political groupings and two families. The governing family or the administration family and ours that are providing alternative. And specifically, I'm just a little of opposition. I'm just restricting myself to the parliamentary opposition family. How much authority, influence, and control and power do you have over your family members as a family head? And before you interjected, uh, Mr. Leader of Opposition, I was interested in the event that you have a possible conflict, the way we look at it here, how do you generate uh, concession and even uh, you know, a trade-off that probably would avoid this, this kind of happening in the future? And to you, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, as a member of um, this committee, I take a lot of offense in my little opposition when he said the chair in his submission particularly was irrelevant. I, I, the fact that he the, the records of parliament captured this, I, Mr. Chair, sir, I'm out of pain. I don't think that that should be part of the proceedings of the chair as a chair. And when he's presiding over this committee, his word is like final. He's like, you know, the speaker is right here. The, the chair represents the speaker. I don't think that that is a language we as a committee would uh, uh, really entertain you know, or a ruling from um, observation from the chairperson of the committee and a member who is appearing before a committee calling it irrelevant. Uh, I would ask uh, if, if to please the chair and colleagues uh, rather that that is knocked off uh, of, of, of the proceedings. The chair has the last word, and uh, I think uh, preliminary proceedings, especially if we're trying to look at the Commonwealth and maybe the United States, especially the Senate, every submission from a member has to specifically focus on three things, content specification, two, boundary demarcation, and also member submitting ensuring that avoidance of pseudo scenarios is then taken in your leader uh, in your leadership uh, leadership position um, my leader the leader of our position how do you go around this because I feel that we your family members sometimes place burdens on your shoulders in our regret that you're here for a crime, literally, that you didn't commit. I appreciate your, uh, the opportunity, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, th procedure. Chair Handling, because whether the opposition has a dispute resolution mechanism, it is not a matter of a, a matter in plenary. This was a matter in plenary. So I don't find the questions being fair to him because matters of management of opposition issues are extremely different from proceedings of parliament. Well, thank you. 
Well, he took offended uh, when the Honorable Nabeshe stated that uh, it was not wise of the, 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 the chair uh, to, to make that statement. And that was true. It is, not, it is unparliamentary. Why I made that uh, statement uh, is that, was that, you know, the attitude, the, 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 your, your action always, whenever the house is suspended, you rush to, to the speaker's chamber. To me, it is also not within, it is not enshrined within the rules of procedure. What I would uh, suggest and what I was trying to suggest, the rules of procedure is going to be amended. And you should also bring that one in the what? In your submission. That whenever house is suspended, the leader of opposition and the, the, the whips, opposition whips and the rest would retreat to the parliament to the what? Such that whatever you will discuss from there can form basis of the what? Of the report that which you can also make on the floor of parliament. And we can also rely on that. Now we are discussing the rumors that uh, you discussed in the, the, the in the, the speaker's chambers, which is not necessary to work uh, for this for this committee. In any case, you have given us time to be with you for for, for the two hours. Sorry for cutting you short, and especially when you call it rumors. I've been uh, concise and precise here that whatever I reported is what transpired in that meeting. So it, fell, it falls short of being rumors because it is on record on the answer. But two and the most importantly, I want to thank Honorable Aisha who rescued me from uh, a litany of his questions. Uh, we two were related actually and correlated at once. Now for the Honorable uh, Katusabe Atikins, and uh, even for the benefit of us all. Besides these rules of procedure and uh, standing orders, there are traditions and practices, I think, cut us over the Commonwealth, which are applied in this legislature, which you cannot uh, shortchange. And this could be one of them, of consensus. As for members, you know my role, for instance, one of the roles is to whip them for due attendance of the proceedings of the House. But in case they are defiant members, we do not have sanctions that you can sanction a member. No. Apart from maybe engaging and arriving at consensus. That's a good, a good it's not provided for in the rules, but it's a good tradition okay. and the practice of the Commonwealth, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the information. I want to thank Honorable uh, Zake and his team for attending this uh, proceeding. We actually wanted that this issue be concluded today. But you see another witness, Honorable Medat Segona, has opted not to, 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 to appear today due to some other reasons. Uh, I would like to request Honorable Zakea and his team and then the fourth estates that uh, you give us like uh, 10 minutes so that we retreat also and we make an in-house kind of uh, resolution on how we shall proceed because you have requested that on Thursday, rather tomorrow you will not be around and the rest. So we want the House to, I mean the committee, to resolve on this issue and then report to you. Just only 10 minutes. But you have discharged him. Yes. Thank you. Bishop Nambesha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honorable. Uh.